Hello friends, Neo Toy Story here, yet again with another 3D printing project. So, um, this is a 710 gauge uh, uh, compression coupling for irrigation poly, which uh, is this stuff. You see it all the time in uh, irrigation, small scale and sometimes even large scale. So the concept behind this, right, is that you push the um, coupling over the tube and the compression of it being pushed against this little rim here because the rim diameter is smaller than the tube diameter it crushes against the pipe and prevents leaks while also allowing you to you know couple two pieces of tubing so that was that was how things started and then they came along with these beautiful things this is a quick connect. They have other different names, but basically similar concept, only instead of on the outside of the tube, you have a barb on the inside. You squeeze that over, and then you go like this, tighten that up, and it creates external compression against the internal barb, smashing the irrigation tube in the middle now the beauty of this is that if you ever want to you know change your irrigation setup or something happens and you got to change things around you just unscrew this and you pop this out usually this goes way farther in by the way um and then you're good to go with these things however forget about it uh once you put it on there uh it's almost not worth trying to get it off because it just sticks and you gotta really strain your muscles to get it off and yeah it's a real pain so <clears throat> I use these irrigation quick connects a lot because I just think they're so much better the only problem is they're kind of expensive you know 88 cents if you buy them in bulk uh, you can get better discounts than that actually if you buy like hundreds uh, if you buy one of these at a hardware store, you're looking at four or five dollars sometimes. So I thought, why not <laughs> 3D print my own? So here is the version three of my Quick Connect. It's the same exact gauge, 710. 710, which is fundamentally like five eighths, like your standard garden hose. So, I designed this to be printed all in one pass, the complete package. These are scaffolds that allow this extra high printing to happen. Uh, as usual, I tried to make it as efficient as possible in terms of filament use. I think it's like 40 grams or something like that. I'll, I'll look up the stats and post them in the description at some point. But anyway, so... Um, yeah, let's let's give this a whirl. So, popping it off here. These are the two end parts. <clears throat> There's some of the stabilization. Now, these you can actually just snap off uh, for starters, and then um, once you've snapped them off, if you're really finicky you can as I am and you can just take a an exacto knife and trim off these little burrs you know this is really similar to like injection molding where there's molding artifacts this is kind of a 3d printed version if you're doing hundreds of these this would probably be pretty tedious but for just one or two, like printing them on demand, I think it's not really that big of a deal. So yeah, see that was pretty pretty quick, right? Okay, so there's a right way and a wrong way to screw these on. Look at that smooth operation. I made the um, threads a little bit looser, so there's a little bit of give. But they're never going to actually like come off of there. So you're going to get a, a nice compression seal with that. And 
If you look on the inside, this is kind of cool. This is something that you'll never see in injection molding. Uh, the width of this uh, cylinder here is 1.2 millimeters. And the profile, the internal profile, perfectly matches the internal or external profile. So you're basically using the absolute minimal amount of materials. All right, so now I'm gonna actually try this out in the field and see how well it works. Hoping for a watertight seal. All right, so here's one of my irrigation lines that already has a quick connect on there, but the conventional injection mold variety. Uh, see how easy those are to remove? Infinitely superior to compression couplings. All right, so here's the moment of truth. All right, so far so good. And I'm after I replace this one, I'm just going to leave it here for a few weeks just to see, you know, whether or not it's going to endure. Okay. So now I'm going to go switch the water on. We're going to see if it works. All right. Water is switched on. It's water flowing through there right now. Interesting. Actually seeing a lot of leaking here. Which is intriguing. Yeah, it's actually coming out of the... The pores. <laughs> Alright, so... So far, this is a... Basically a failure, I would say. That's really interesting. However... The caveat here is that the filament I'm using that I use for this print is this really trash filament that basically the layers don't bond really well. So I'm going to print out a version of this in high quality PLA and see if I can get a watertight seal. That's really interesting that it's coming out of where the um, supports were. That kind of fascinates me. Um, yeah, but not a catastrophic failure. It's not like it exploded and water sprayed everywhere. Basically just kind of a soft fail. The compression aspect working just fine. What I really have here is a material failure. Wow. Yeah, see this, this um, PLA is trash, honestly. I think if I make another version, I might actually add some reinforcement in there too to strengthen the tubes a little bit. Wow, they both broke off. Yeah, that's layer, layer adhesion, really important. Uh, I hope this has been informative so far. I'm definitely going to print out a, uh improved version here pretty quick. But uh, thanks for watching so far.